Hi, this is Richard from Boat Fittings and this is part three of our video series on boat electrics from scratch. Based on this mock-up of a boat, uh, in parts one and two we covered building this mock-up, installing the switch panel, installing the main battery leads, the master switch, the buzz bar, and getting an interior light working. In this part three bit we're looking at bilge pumps. So we've got three different kinds of bilge pumps here. This is about as simple as you can get. It's a manual bilge pump with two wires. It's 12 volts. It's simply an on or off bilge pump. This one here is a quite a large automatic bilge pump with a float switch. So as the water level rises, float switch kicks in and it starts working. This is a different kind of automatic bilge pump uh, it looks very similar, but it doesn't actually have a float switch inside. It has some electronics which kind of figure out whether there's water that needs pumping out or not. I did a separate video on the difference in how these two kinds of uh, auto pump work, and I'll include a link to that video in the in the details below this this video. The other thing we're going to include and talk about is a separate float switch which we're going to wire in with this manual bilge pump and also this special kind of switch which is a dedicated switch for bilge pumps it has a, a fuse, built-in fuse and it has a manual and automatic position but we'll come into that in more detail we're going to be connecting the bilge pumps up to this switch panel each switch comes with a fuse which is a 5 amp fuse so we need to be a little bit careful. If we look at this first of the pumps, it has a 4 amp rating. And if we look at the other pump, it has a 3 amp rating. So 4 plus 3 is 7 amps, which is going to be more than each any individual one of these switches can handle. So what we're going to do is split it. We're going to have one of them running off this uh, switch that's already labelled bilge pump and we're going to run the other one off this lower aux switch. So we're going to install this manual pump first, but we're not going to run it as a manual pump. We're going to include this float switch, so as if the water level rose it would turn on the switch. So we're going to run it as an automatic system. What I'm going to do first is install these mechanically into the, onto the model, and then we will take care of the wiring. Okay, so let's have a think about the wiring. We've got two wires to the pump, a positive and a negative. It is important that they're the right way around because otherwise the pump will go the wrong way and it won't pump. Uh, the negative wire we're going to bring through in the same style as we did for the cabin light. We're going to bring it through to the sort of engine bay area and connect it to the buzz bar. And the positive wire we're going to bring up to the switch panel but the positive wants to run through the float switch I could chop the wire short and connect them up here what I'm going to do instead is let's say keep them a bit more future proof bring the wires through the bulkhead um, around the back uh, behind the switch panel keeping a bit more length of wire and make the connections on that side of things First though, a bit of cable management. So I'm going to take the negative from the bilge pump, feed it through the bulkhead, and then I can take care of the connection. Okay, so here in the engine bay side of things, I've got my negative wire. I'm going to connect it to the buzz bar. I'm going to use the same convention I did for the overhead light, count the switches down, and we're going to use the bottom switch, which is number six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to use this end position here. I have found a little um, round terminal to go onto that. I'm going to take off the insulating sleeve and take care of that with some heat shrink. 
just lets me get in there to uh, solder the wire on. I've got a little bit of heat shrink here. So we'll get on with the uh, stripping of the wire and soldering. We're going to put the heat shrink on. Then we're going to strip the end of the wire. Put on the uh, terminal. And I find these little clamps really handy. So let's get that soldered on. And that looks all good to go. So that is the negative side taken care of. Now we're going to look at the positives. Okay, so we've got these three brown wires, one from the bilge pump and two from the float switch. I'm going to feed these all through, through the bulkhead towards the switch panel. And I think the easiest way to think of this is that the positive power source is coming from the switch panel um, here and that's got to go through the float switch so one of the float switch wires is going to be connected to this switch panel and then the other wire from the float switch is going to be connected up to the bilge pump. So we will start with the connection of one of the float switch wires to the switch panel. Okay, so I've trimmed the uh, wire to about the right length. So I'm going to pop the heat shrink on. And you can go onto the spade terminal of the switch. So that is all on and sorted. So the only other thing I've got to do is connect the other wire from the float switch to the positive to power the pump. Now I'm going to strip and so strip these wires and solder them together and heat shrink over them. A couple of things to point out. I could make them shorter to reduce the wire run, but I'm going to choose to keep them longer in case I modify things, move things in the future. The other thing to point out is one of the reasons and advantages of bringing things through to this side of the system to make the connection is we're on the high and dry here so I don't have to worry about a waterproof connection here whereas if I made the connections down in the bilge which is a wet area then I would be thinking I need to waterproof them. So we've got our cabin light on, we've got a bilge pump ready to go when the float switch operates. Now I can imagine there might be one or two comments about the wiring of this pump with the float switch because I know that some people will prefer to have a manual override so that in, in case this float switch for some reason gets jammed up, tangled up or stops working uh, you can have a manual switch to turn the pump on as well and I'm quite in favour of that as well but I thought I'd start with the simplest let's say installation and wiring up and then sometimes it's nice to modify a system to add something to it because that's generally what happens in in reality on people's boats so I'm going to add the manual override as an additional thing a little bit later on. So the other pump we're going to put into this system is this automatic bilge pump. It has three wires. So we've got the negative, which I'm going to hook up to the negative of the power supply. And we've got these two brown wires. One of them 
is for powering the pump manually and one is for auto mode. Just by trial and error. Yeah, that, that's the manual wire. If you power it up by this other one, it goes into a electronic mode. What it's doing there is it's putting the motor on for a little bit and then it's detecting how much current it draws. If it was pumping water, it would draw more current than if there's no water. So it knows at the moment there's no water and it turns itself off. What it's going to do is every two and a half minutes or so, it's going to repeat that little test. And that's how it works out whether to pump or not. The C-Flow panel, it's got a built-in fuse. It's got this switch which can go onto automatic mode or onto manual mode. Now looking at the back of this switch panel, essentially we've got the negative going to this black one here. We've got the positive feed going to this this one here. And we're going to pick up on these two lower spade connectors here for auto and manual mode. So at the moment I've got the switch in auto mode and if I put my multimeter on this spade here I'm getting 12 volts. And if I go to manual mode, I'm going to get my 12 volts on this spade here. So that's how this works. I'm going to put a link underneath this video to a place where you can see a detailed wiring diagram or detailed photographs of this switch panel. So on with installing these bits and getting them wired up. So I'm going to start with the feeds which come to the bilge pump switch itself. We've got the positive wire here which is going to come to uh, the switch on the main switch panel. And the bilge pump switch I'm going to use is the fourth one down so it's going to come to this terminal here. Okay, so I've completed the wiring. What we've got is the negative wire from the bilge pump and the negative from the switch panel are coming together, uh, joined together to a, a negative which is going through to the buzz bar. And then the two brown leads from the pump are coming to the two terminals I mentioned earlier on the switch panel. So now all the connections are made, I'm gonna tidy up the wiring before we can look at the pump in operation. Now what I've done is just tidied up the wires a little bit. So we've got a bundle of loose wires here on this bulkhead from the new bilge pump. And around the front side, looking reasonably neat and tidy. Now we're ready to uh, fire it up and look at everything working together. So I'm going to first connect up the power leads. Now I can turn on the power supply which is going to give us the 12 volts to the system. And now we've got three things up and running. We've got the cabin light in here. We've got the first bilge pump we did which is the manual bilge pump connected up to the float switch. Which if I just operate the float switch that comes on okay. And we have the second bilge pump on this switch here which has got the um, special switch panel for manual auto mode so we flip it over to manual you see that lights up the switch lights up red and then if we flip it over to auto it does its initial test to check the pump is working and that there's in this case there's no water so it turns itself off again so happy days we've got a functioning system 
Next time we're going to add a few more bits and pieces. We've had a few questions come in along the way. One of, the, one of them was what if we're using a, a fuse panel instead of a switch panel. So we'll probably bring in adding in a fuse panel somewhere down here. The other one was um, adding in different lighting to the system. How can we run more than one light? How do we kind of attach everything together? So we'll bring some of that kind of thing into it and uh, see what else we can add to this system as we go. Hope you found this useful. If you did, it'd be great if you could give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.